All right. Let's try to solve question number 153, find minimum in rotated sorted array. We're going to read the question, come up with a couple of solutions, uh, try to analyze our solutions, and see which one we should code up. We probably need to think about the most optimal solution, um, and that's the one I'll probably be coding up. Suppose an array sorted in ascending order is rotated at some pivot unknown to you beforehand. For example, uh, your array originally is 0, 1, 2, 4, 5, 6, 7, might become 4, 5, 6, 7, 0, 1, 2, 3. Cool. Uh, find the minimum element. So pretty much find the smallest thing. Okay, that sounds easy. Uh, you may assume no duplicate exists in their array. Great. I don't have to check for like some edge cases. Great. So in this question, it seems pretty uh, simple. You know, <clears throat> find the smallest value in the input array, right? Uh, with a caveat here, though. So when we analyze the question a little bit more, sometimes we would understand like, well, if it's just simply you know find the minimum element and you're given an array, that that's pretty simple, right? Why bother mentioning all these other points? Well. Some of these other points is actually there to help you optimize your question to be even more efficient, right? So let's try to, uh, first of all, come up with some of the more naive solutions first, right? <clears throat> so to reiterate, this question is simply, you're given an array, that array originally was sorted, um, and then it got pivoted at some point. Um, however, you know, in this new semi-sorted pivoted array, find the smallest element, right? Uh, it seems relatively simple, right? Uh, one of the solutions you may think about is like, well, maybe I could just simply iterate through every element um, of an array. For example, um, I, would, I can iterate through four, five, six, seven, zero, one, two, three, um, and just keep track to see what is my smallest value, right? I can just create a variable, pop in a value there, check it as I iterate through everything, and boom, I'm done, right? Find the minimum value. Now, what is the time complexity of that particular algorithm, right? If you need to iterate through the whole thing, you know, and store something, and iterate, and then compare it, that's O of N time complexity, right? With a, I would say, O of 1, um, space complexity because you're only storing that initial variable. Um, so space is pretty good, right? And time, generally speaking, O of N is good. Um, but let's see if we can actually try to solve this problem even better. Um, well, if you think uh, ever so slightly, um, maybe the, the question, you know, so what I like to do sometimes is like, okay, we know that would be the brute force way of solving it. Uh, maybe there's a way I could solve this um, in a more, you know, smart, intelligent way, right? Uh, and, and another way you can think about solving this is that, well, why not try solving it with a cute one-liner, right? I can simply just go here and return something that's called math.min, right? And I can just simply spread nums, right? And that should probably solve or give me my solution, right? Let's see if this fine gives me my solution. Yeah, it does give me my solution, and it's pretty darn fast too, right? However, that is also of time complexity O of n time, because effectively, this is simply uh, the same thing as going uh, using a for loop, going and comparing everything, and that doesn't really solve the problem with the most optimal thing. So what can we do? So this is where we start looking at uh, the description and one of the couple of elements that uh, they were highlighting, right? We know certain patterns of our input, right? We know the pattern is that um, it's going in ascending order originally, so sorted in nature. Um, so we know that the leftmost element would be the smallest, the rightmost element should be the greatest, if it were not pivoted, right? So that's one attribute that is very critical, it's really key, it gets good information. Um, so one thing we could think about is like, okay, what can we do in this particular array um, that would shorten our time from O of N to something smaller, like perhaps log N, right? So in any log 
end type of solution. Um, you always have to think about, can I solve this problem by always uh, making my elements smaller and smaller and smaller and smaller as I look at it, right? Or at least look at it in the half context, right? Or at least start from the midpoint of every element and then reduce my array from that midpoint, right? So that's something that we could think about. Um, and if we were to improve it to the next step, um, then we may need to do something of O of log n, right? And in order to do that, you could only think about, well, what, if, what's, what can we do? We could do a, a binary searchy type of algorithm to see if we could find the late, least amount of number, right? Yeah, I think we could do something like that, right? So what that really means is that, okay, well, all I need to do is ensure that my point of reference um, is comparing to like something in front of me, if it's going to be greater than that particular element, uh, then I can just readjust uh, my boundaries, right? So what I mean by that, let's, let's look at some code and uh, maybe you'll understand a little more. So when we look uh, to implement some sort of binary way of searching for the lowest value, uh, we want to establish like two boundaries, right? So we want to put a left segment and the right segment. So let me just create a left will equal to starting from like the zero point as an example, it will be at that index zero. And then left, let my right will equal P to be this particular element on the right. So I'm going to go say nums.length minus one, right? Cool. Now, what I'm going to do is ensure that my left uh, index is going to be less than my right index. So what does this mean? I'm going to be changing my left and right index based on how I compare things. Um, that's what we're going to try to do. Um, but before I do that, let's actually create a midpoint. Right. So in any binary thing here, so let's go midpoint to and in, remember what we mentioned earlier, what we're trying to do is trying to reduce our iterations. So it's log n. And in order to make it a log n thing, we have to ensure that every time we adjust our array that we keep analyzing, um, it should be smaller and smaller. So we can skip certain things if we know roughly how um, the array looks. Right. So we're going to create a midpoint um, and going to call math.floor from the left right plus right divide by two that's my midpoint right so in this case it's like the midpoint right here right cool um, and what we want to do is check whether or not my num point um, at the midpoint is going to be greater than my nums at my right point right what does this do um, so if we're if this is greater than my right point, for example, if uh, I'm in the middle, right, and my right point is to the you know to this point, if I know that this is greater than this, then I know um, effectively uh, this is not my left. I should adjust my left, right. But if it's not, then we should probably change the right to the midpoint, right. So what I'm going to do here is going to be left will equal to mid point plus one, right? So what that really means is that, okay, cool. I, if I know that this is greater than this, right? Uh, because our idea of things going in ascending order, right? If my value here is greater than my rightmost value, then I know for a fact that my next value can potentially be the solution that I'm looking for, right? Because uh, think about it, we're talking about ascending order, right? So meaning that our leftmost part would be smallest, my rightmost part would be highest, right? So this is something for us to check that. Um, and then otherwise, I'm otherwise if that's not the case, then I'm going to change my right to equal to the midpoint. All right. So what this really does um, is that okay, uh, if my if this for example if this was the value that was being checked at my midpoint, I know it's not the midpoint, but for argument's sake, if it was, um, and if we're checking my right, um, hmm, okay, that's not the best example to show that, but okay, let's just show something like this. So for boom, my right will just become my midpoint, and you're gonna move this point back into here, right? So those are for the cases where your zeros are gonna be more closer to the front segment that deals with this one. <clears throat> this is more when it's more towards the, <coughs> the pivot point is going more to the right. All right, 
Cool. So we're going back into here, return uh, the actual solution, which is going to be your left item, right? Boom. So once you've gone through everything um, and these missing the condition, then effectively you should be able to solve the problem right here. And this should be the solution. All right, cool. So sometimes you may ask yourself, like, why, even though in theory this is um, a better efficiency, um, why do I get less, uh, you know, less time on here, right? So, like, I wanted to tell everyone, you know, don't pay too much attention to how fast this is. This is not accurate or that accurate, right? But the better, it's more important to understand your actual algorithm itself, um, to understand like what you're doing, um, and to see if you're an and when you're analyzing, see the space complexity, the time complexity, and that should help you move forward and not focus too hard on like, oh, I'm faster than X amount of percent because that really, it really, there's lots of things to consider, the latency and all that, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Um, if this were to be accurate, you know, if I were running it again, then I should be getting the same value, right? Which in this case, it will not do so. So I'm gonna submit it again just for, you, for argument's sake. Boom, I got a different one here, 68.71 and then, 86%, it's like, it goes all over the place, just to prove a point, okay? So, E point, <coughs> focus on your solution, and not so, and understand uh, your time complexities from that solution, um, and not focus too much on the actual, um, the actual, like, milliseconds, etc. from that point, okay? Hope you find this video helpful. If you like it, please add a sub. Um, I, my next video, I'm gonna to try to do something more what my audience asked for, which is describe uh, what recursion is all about. So if you guys want a little bit more, stay tuned. I'm probably gonna release that sometime this week as well. Um, and yeah, hope you like it. Peace.